Hello everybody, I hope you enjoyed the artwork of John James Audubon. You're going to get started on your own winter birds today. Uh, you're going to need a white piece of paper from your art packet, a pencil, uh, and you're going to need uh, maybe a thin marker and either watercolors, color pencils, or crayons. You might want to choose two of those. I'm going to do watercolor in my background and um, probably crayons on my bird. We'll see. Now I want you to pause the video for a moment. I want you to find a picture of a bird that you see in the winter. A, one of the birds that I see in the winter are woodpeckers, um, owls, and cardinals. These are all birds that I see in the winter. I want you to find a picture either in a book, on the internet, and have it seated in front of you, just like I have mine sitting in front of me. I want you to look at the shape of the body. The shape of the body of my bird is an upside down raindrop, and it's very vertical. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to draw that body shape. I'm going to draw it nice and big on my paper because the woodpecker is the star of the show. So right now I'm not thinking about any of those details. I'm just thinking about shapes and sizes. Okay, now I'm going to look at the head because that's the next main part of this bird. And the head is an oval shape and it's at an angle. So I'm going to put my pencil right on the head at the angle that it's going. Bring it over to my drawing. I know that this head, do you see how it's further back than the body? Look at how much space is between there. So when I place it on here, you see how I kind of get the shape? I start really lightly to get the shape. I've got the back of my head further back than the body. Now when I look at the neck, the neck starts about at the middle and I have to bring it back to meet the head. There we go. So now I can start looking at more detailed things like the crest at the top of the head. It starts way up here at the front of the head. Let's see, I think it's going to come up a little bit higher. That's about the shape that I want, maybe just a little further. So I make mistakes too, but I don't stop and erase them right away. I finish my line and then go back and fix them. That way I can learn from my mistakes and I don't keep making the same mistake. I'm going to measure my beak. So, I'm going to measure it against the head. They kind of look like they're about the same size. So I measured it with my fingers. Wow, my head and my beak are the same size. So my beak is going to come out to about here. That's just an easy way for me to measure things and make it bigger because I'm drawing much bigger on my paper than in the picture here and then I can still keep everything in proportion. There we go. So I've got all my main shapes on here. I'm going to start putting my wing in and it starts just below the neck. And it's going to sweep right down towards the bottom of the body and it comes off the body just a little bit. The last detail that I need to draw in the body area is probably the foot. You can see the foot is grabbing onto the tree there. So I'm going to work on that. 
Let's see, it is way down here, so I need to leave some space. There we go, I think I'm gonna start right in here. I'm gonna erase a little spot for me to work in. All right, those toes are coming forward right at me. And they're funny shapes. I'm just gonna draw the shapes that I see. And then there's one more toe kind of poking out right over here. These two connect and it goes into this ankle. And then it kind of disappears into the feathers. He's got some little claws that are helping him grab onto the tree. I don't really see the last one either. Okay, now I'm gonna look at the feathers and the face and all those details. So first I'm gonna look at, I have these white feathers. It kind of follows the shape of my oval. And then it comes down and around the shoulder. Right up the back of the head. And then there's a black stripe that goes from the beak all the way through to the back of the head. The eye is also in this area. And it's nice and round. There we go. I don't know if you can see that detail. But there's some yellow and then the black pupil. There's a little white stripe just above into the red area. There's also this little red shape here. So you can see I'm looking at one shape at a time. And it's going to come down and over and back up to the mouth. So look for the little details on your bird. I've got a little nostril here. And then a few yellow feathers. When you get done drawing out the details of color, I need to know what direction my feathers are going. So if I can see them, it's a little hard to see the black feathers because they're blending into each other, but I see a little bit of them. And they're going in a downward direction. So I'm going to put those in. And then I'm going to look at the wing feathers. The feathers at the top are a little bit smaller up here at the shoulder and then there are a few longer feathers a little bit further down So just draw what you can see. If you look really closely like Audubon did, he would study his birds and really get up close to them to look them over. All right, I think that's looking pretty good. The last thing I need to do is put in where the tree is. I can see that the tree touches the bird right about here. And it's a pretty rough tree. It's been beaten up. A lot of woodpeckers on it. I'm 
now I'm ready for my background. I'm gonna wet my background first. Oh no, I better outline first. So I'm just going to use my thin marker. You could, if you're going to watercolor, you could also use a black crayon for this. You could even use your black color pencil too. Whatever you have, go ahead and use that. I'm using watercolor. I think it'll go really quick with watercolor and I'm going to start by wetting my background one section at a time. You can see I'm being very careful right here along the edge of the bird and then I just need to wet this area. I think I can do an area about this big before it starts to dry. It's about about as big as my hand. There we go. I'm going to wet my colors here. Let's see, it's pretty much a gray in the background. I'm going to have a little bit of brown. Maybe a tiny bit of green. There's not really any green in the picture. And I'm going to wet the black also. Now, the colors black and brown are pretty powerful. So I'm going to start with green. It's my lightest color. And I'm just going to dabble it in here. No real rhyme or reason, but you can see I'm just putting a little bit of paint on my brush. I don't want my background to become overpowering and take away from my bird. So now just a little bit of brown in here. If I get too much, I can always rinse my brush off, grab a little bit more water, and move it around a bit. Oh my goodness, drop my brush. All right, now black is a very powerful color, so I'm just picking up a lot of water and a little bit of gray. And if I get too much again, I'm just gonna move it around. And you can see how that's gonna make a really pretty blurry background. Alright, I just finished painting my background. It took me less than 10 minutes to paint that whole background, but now I need to wait for it to dry. If I picked it up right now, I just know all of that water is going to move to where I don't want it, and I'm going to end up with color on my bird. Um, so I'm going to leave it for about 20 minutes. This is a good time to go get a snack, to take a little break, and come back when it is dry. All right, I have my crayons. I waited for my paper to dry. And these are the only colors I think I'm gonna need. So I'm just gonna look at my uh, picture here and kind of relate that to what I have drawn on the woodpecker. So one of the things that I do so that I'm gonna stay inside my own lines is of course I kind of go along the edge first and then I can fill in the area. I think the top of this crest looks a little bit brighter than the bottom so I'm adding in a red violet and you can layer your colors too especially if you decided to use color pencil you can layer your colors Take your time and make it the way you want. Oh. So 
So I have this other red area in here. And it's a little, little bit darker area. I had the red violet and red up here. This one's a little bit darker, so I'm just going to color that in. Take your time, think about your neatness. If you need to get out a color pencil for an area, there's no way I can do this eye here without going outside the lines. So I'm gonna grab a yellow color pencil real quick and color that yellow part. But to make the wings stand out a little bit, I am going to add a bit of blue and then color over it with black. It'll be nice and dark, but it'll be a little bit different tone than the body. So you can see the wing looks a little bit different than the body surrounding that. And you can do that with your bird too. Even if your bird is um, brown, you could color under it with orange. If it's a red bird, you can color under the red wing color with a little bit of uh, violet or red violet. That would look really nice. So look for tones that are similar. Look for colors that are similar. I have the tree left and my tree has a lot of texture on it. You can see the really rough bark there and I need to recreate that on my tree. So I think I'm going to try and find some things with texture that are laying around. I want you to see if you can find a little bit of texture around your house. It has texture in my classroom is the wall. So I am going to use the texture from the block to create texture. You could probably find texture on the bottom of your shoe, maybe even your floor at home. Whatever you find, it's a little bit tricky to color on the wall, but look at how much texture I'm getting. just letting the wall do most of the work for me. Now, of course, I need to be careful when I get to the edge of my paper because I don't want to color on the wall. I might get in a lot of trouble. Well, not here in the art room, but you might get in a lot of trouble at your house. So I'm just going to leave a little gap right here along the edge of my paper so I don't color onto the wall. All right, I am all finished. That was a lot of fun to just grab the texture off of the wall there and use that to make my tree. I hope you have a lot of fun. Don't forget to turn in this last project on Google Classroom, and I can't wait to see you here in the art room.